I'm here with the Shaolin man and I'm going to ask him very hard questions. So first question, how many years it took you to become this high in this, in the Shaolin community? Oh, I have been practicing for more than 30 years since I was a child. So you are practicing for 35 years, every more than 35 years, every day. You are 42 and he started practicing at five years old. So I've been here in this temple and he's uh, our master and he's training us for one week now. And is honestly, I is one of my favorite people in the world. It, he makes me want to follow what he's saying. I will ask some basic questions that people have uh, curiosity about uh, Shaolin monks. So are Shaolin monks allowed to get married? The Shaolin master, he is not allowed to marry. Okay. How, how many years it takes to become a Shaolin Shifu? Oh, at least five years. And uh, there is a lot of people that become Shaolin monks. There are a lot of Shaolin masters. That is in the terms of masters at practicing Shaolin Kung Fu. But there are not many masters who are masters at practicing Shaolin Kung Fu, but as well masters at teaching it. You have a lot of students. How do you shout at them, but also being cool so they can respect you? As a master, we must first have a sense of responsibility. And secondly, we must know what to say to the students. Also, part of Kung Fu is using our hands to teach the students. Because Kung Fu is to be taught through body language. So you don't have a personalized, uh, you don't have a leadership for everyone. You see each person and then you, you do a specific uh, for every person. Right, because it is said that everyone has their own dream of Kung Fu. We all like Kung Fu very much, but my role as the master is teaching everyone to love the process of Kung Fu. By practicing according to how the master teaches is part of the method. So what Kung Fu means to you? Well, Kung Fu really spread around the world in the Bruce Lee time. Kung Fu means to put time into what you practice. There is also the way you practice Kung Fu. Through this training, Kung Fu can be presented through your appearance. There needs to be a kind of power and practice, a yin and yang. It also means that it exists in normal daily life. I have to say that Kung Fu is not only fighting, it's also Kung Fu can become in everyday uh, work. Of, if you work hard, that's the way that you express Kung Fu. Is that true? Kung Fu is a part of life that allows you to understand life, to love life, to have a discovery of life. That is to say, seeing and understanding that this life, your life, is good and that this life will be better. So can I practice Kung Fu without practicing physical uh, training, just mental training by reading books and stuff? Oh, this is not possible. Because Kung Fu relies on the body. That is, the external training of tendons and bones, the internal training of breath. By reading books, your brain can know knowledge, but your body cannot go to practice. So reading books first, let us understand the reason. But at the same time, we need to train our body. So one must organize the brain and body together, every day through hammering practice. It can be said that the practice of Kung Fu is a very monotonous and a tedious, lonely thing because every day it is the same thing over and over again. The monks, they are like a community. They are together and they are learning from each other, the Shaolin monks. Oh, that is because when it comes time to start learning, there are different masters that will teach you at different levels. And if you practice well, you can become a Shaolin master. Can, uh, can one person from other religion or other country become a Shifu master? Yes, if you practice well, you can become a Shaolin master. How related is Buddhism with Shaolin uh, warriors? This is a Buddhist temple. 
The Shaolin Temple is an ancestral temple of Zen Buddhism, a traditional ancestral temple. The Dharma was transmitted by the Dharma, a Dharma lineage. So as a Shaolin uh, warrior, do you uh, practice meditation? Do you pray? What is some uh, rituals that you do? Kung Fu is a way to say you want to practice well because your mind needs to reach the so-called Zen, which is to say, sitting in meditation. That being said, Shaolin itself is the Zen. Okay, and I want you, can you describe to the people that they are what, watching all the, how this temple is, is working? Like, because we are, you have 17 students now from 15 different countries and you are training them. So can you describe like why uh, you started this? Because... I have been teaching and dealing with foreign countries for more than 20 years. I want more people to understand Chinese Kung Fu and help their physical and mental health. Because we all live on the same earth. The earth is like a village, although it is said that Kung Fu originated in China. It belongs to the world, which means that all people in this global village have the right to enjoy the health and happiness that Kung Fu brings to you. So I, I met a lot of the students and a lot of them they are very, very, very clever people. That They are running multi-million dollar businesses. They, have, they are very successful in their life and they just gave up their life for a couple of weeks, a couple of months just to learn from you. Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, I also like that they can come here to learn Kung Fu. Learning Kung Fu is not too much related to how much money they have. First of all, they may not be able to learn everything about Kung Fu in books or in studies. Because they do not practice Kung Fu, you cannot find the mystery of Kung Fu without practice. Because it is your body because it has energy inside. The question is, how do you go to tap in to this energy? So before in the class, while we were doing the lesson, you shared a story uh, or metaphor that one, and you ask us one homeless person, is he, uh, how, do you think it's a burden that he's homeless or do you think it's not a problem that he's homeless? Can you share this with the audience, uh, this metaphor that you used before? because I loved it and it really touched me while you... Satisfaction means that if I go to ask for food every day and I do not eat well, I'm still happy because I'm satisfied. I feel that this life, carefree, is not much pressure because everyone's fate is different. Some people, like you said, a lot of money. You may have 10 million or 100 million, but you still may be unhappy. Some people live in a large house, but they too are also very unhappy. But there are people like the satisfied beggar, where although he has nothing, no house and no money, his mind is very happy. Matter means to, to have a lot. And the more you think about it, the more you live in the matter. So a person who lives in the matter will feel like a lot is not enough. That is not good. It is very painful. A lot of young people are watching. What is, what is your advice about them for to have a happy life that they're proud of? In fact, in life, people should live in the spiritual world, to pursue a spirit. Do not pursue material things too much. Material things are possible, but do not be greedy. Uh, to pursue too much, this may make your life more unhappy. Are, are you afraid of death? Everyone may be afraid of death. Maybe. The... Fear of death for a person is because they, he, do not understand it. People from the day of birth are destined to have life and death. As I just mentioned, the more you live in the material, the more afraid of death. So, when you live in the spiritual world, 
and less in the material. You understand that one day you have to die, and you will be very happy to go. Some people die in a society, but they stay alive in the minds of the people who are still living, and other people live in the minds of the person who has to die. So it is said, if people understand life and death, they will not be afraid of death. So what's the meaning of life, you think? Why are we in this world? So, so why is it that when a baby is born, he cries? He knows that the world is very bitter. When he is born, he understands, because in life there is bitterness, sourness, sweetness, and spiciness. So this is. You understand? This is a person's life. So what's the meaning of this life? So we are here to experience this life. We're here to uh, uh, maybe God is, is the meaning of life. We're here to help others. Because many people may be very contradictory in their hearts, don't know what the meaning of their arrival in this world. In fact, everyone came to this world uh, is to survive. To survive in order to better life. Maybe the future life, we cannot see the life, may slowly. The country is rich. The country is very rich. The country is very strong. The farmers live a very happy life. The world is peaceful. The country is peaceful. The people are very happy. Happy, the world is at peace. The country is peaceful. That is, every country is very peaceful. The people live a very safe and a happy life so that everyone should know this truth. Maybe the world will be like Buddha, very peaceful. What you want to leave behind in this world? At some point you are going to die. I don't know, maybe you will live forever, but <laughs> probably you will die. So what do you want to leave in this world? The idea is that it depends on what you have done in this life. If you do something that is a global sensation one day, that is, oh, everyone knows you, and maybe one day you go out and people all over the world will feel for you and love you. Oh, when this person is gone, he will still live in the hearts of the people. The more people you help, the more people will feel that you are alive, both when you are around and when you are gone. So you, you never die in a way. Pretty much, yeah. Just like the great chairman of our country, who was the first to shout out Long live the people, Chairman Mao. He has always lived in the hearts of the people and will live in their hearts forever. So you want to be remembered in people's hearts when you die? Mm, well, I don't think of it that way. I just want to take what I've learned and what I've come to realize and teach it to others so it can help more people. So he just thinks about the impact that he wants to do. He doesn't think about the effect of the impact. Teaching others what I have learned is how I can be remembered. Because everyone's energy or power is different, like as a Kung Fu master. How many students can you recognize? What makes someone learn from you? What changes has come from learning Kung Fu with you? If it changes the person and benefits them, then they will remember you as a master. So you keep saying one word in the training. When you help others, you help yourself. What do you mean by that? If you go to help more people, one, two, three, ten, one hundred, if one day you have a difficult time, maybe these one hundred people will go and help you. Uh, Another thing that I notice is that so many people here respect you. And is this sometimes difficult for you to live a normal everyday life because you have like, you are a celebrity in the temple? Oh, this is not a problem. That is to say, I still do my own good, my teachings and practice. I am also in the European martial arts circle. Many people know me there as well. But, but how do you achieve that? First of all, you know that you are a master. You have to insist on teaching your students well and with care. Teaching each student 
so that he feels that his master is really helping him, knowing what the student is thinking and what he wants. So he's mostly focusing on his work yeah. so, and he ignores all the other stuff. Yes, that means communication is very important. Communicate with each other, communicate with your heart and your body, because many people live in the eyes of others. That is what others think and say. Follow the rhythm of others. Each person should follow their own heart. So, how do you learn? You read books, you read, uh, you speak with other people. How do you learn stuff? Or just by your own well, exercise or something? Well, the first step is to read more books. The second step is to find a good master. To help train your body to learn. The third step is to learn that everyone actually has merit. Learn that if you are able to help yourself, then why can't you help others? So he, he is saying that it's, uh, it's very important to, be spe to choose the right person to learn from. Yes, if there are three people, one may be good at one aspect and another a different aspect, but one will be the teacher. Can you describe me how hard uh, was it for you to be training every day for all these 35, 37 years on the same craft? Well, at first, it may be a little tiring. If you take Kung Fu as part of your life, it forms a kind of law. It is very simple, just like eating. If you do not eat every day, you become very hungry. Every meal you miss, you, you become more hungry, just like Kung Fu. When it's become part of your life, you must practice it every day. And if you don't practice it, you feel like you're missing something. And is it as easy to train and to keep training in this age that now that you're 42, like you were 18, or it gets a lot more difficult to maintain your shape and your skills? The practicing of Kung Fu is different depending on the person's age because the physiological changes of the human body. Kung Fu is actually taught to be a part of a person's physiology. The physiology part is taught to men in eight years. That is when he is in a physiological cycle. Women are seven years. When we are young, for example, at the age of 16, we can only play with weights up to 50 kilograms, sort of say. But when we reach the age of 50 and our bones have matured, we get the strength to lift heavier objects, but we move much slower. Yes, so the way we practice now is different from the way we used to practice when we were kids. So, so he has a different training now in his life than... Right. So the way of practicing now is much different from the way we would have practiced in the past as a child. So can you explain for the people how does a life of you look like? Like you wake up, what time in the morning, what is your task that you have to do? What time do you sleep? Do you practice? My day-to-day -day life starts at 6 in the morning, where I do the Tai Chi and Qigong stance until 7. After that, I practice and teach the students until noon. This is where the students and I also converse and mutually exchange teachings. In the afternoon, I also practice with the students, but I, so to speak, teach them practicing methods and practical things like combat methods. Yes, and we have some videos of while we were training with him and he was beating everybody up. <laughs> well, yes, it is important to all be together. The master is in almost every Wednesday. And any student can go and talk to the master to discuss anything on their mind, as well as have a mutual discussion. He did that as well yesterday. He only missed five people. <laughs> but I sense also when he's doing all this stuff, he's making jokes, he's making everyone, all of the students to laugh. So how do you go so hardcore and also have some energy to make jokes and like, being funny, I think, is a big part of your personality, so how do you put jokes in your... 
for each student because they all are at a different level. You must bring out this laughter from them, that is to get them comfortable, to strengthen them and show them their potential. So he's doing it strategically to make the student feel the right way. This is his strategy to make, make jokes for the students to feel a certain way. Yes, to tap into their potential so that their mood is lifted, as Kung Fu is to find themselves. And when they are happier, they can better understand themselves. Another two questions. If I give you one trillion dollars, how do you use it? In fact, if you just look at the money, you become obsessed with it, and you become the money. If you say you have too much money and you no longer care for it, then you are not the money. He is either money or a person, similar to what I said earlier between a person spiritual and material. But you spoke about impact, having a certain impact. So how do you use that money to have impact in the world? First of all, you have to be happy first. You just said that you look for the money. If you look at the money, you become the money. If you do not look at the money and treat it as a piece of paper, you will be happy. So how, how you are going to use this money to make people happy? You are going to build more schools? You definitely want to help the people who need money, but you don't want to give it to someone who does not earn it. You must teach them the ways and means to earn money, or giving them the money may harm them. But the question is, how do you educate them? Everyone may say they encounter money. They will all encounter it in different ways. Because you have one million dollars, one trillion dollars, do you make videos in the world? Do you open a lot of schools? First of all, it is certainly good to build many great schools and produce great videos as well. But for each person who needs this money, you have to be careful to see if their intention with it is good or bad because of, well, human nature. Many people will die or even kill for money, just like how animals would for food. So the answer is I will first build the right team yeah. and then I will go and do impact in the world. So the last question is every time we end the video on, on a quote, on a kind of a teaching of, of the, for the people. So I will leave you to say something to the people that they are watching because millions of people are watching us now. So what do you want to say to them? It is my hope to see that everyone we talk to today and everyone who watched this video live a happy life every day. Make your life Kung Fu, or a life learning. That is, make yourself full inside. Find your true heart. Don't sink into this material world, this spirit and material. It is like yin and yang together. This spirit and matter are mutual. He put all the teachings that he learned and he's teaching us into one PDF and one email list and he wants to give it to you as a present because his goal is to pass his teaching that they influenced me the past seven days. So we're going to put a link in the description and you guys go and sign up to the email list and you're going to read all these teachings that he teaches, which they were very, very beautiful and beneficial to my life and transformative the last seven days. You are going to learn about Kung Fu, about Shaolin training and a lot more to influence your life and have impact in your life. Okay. Mm. Thank you. I love you. Thank you for everything, the teachings and everything.